He might be small, but he's a giant of the game. And he's a Tigers fan favourite. A hat-trick for Dion Prestia! With over 200 games and three premierships, who says good things don't come in small packages? Next. It's the end of a busy week, which must mean it's time for Friday knockoffs. Brought to you by friends at Pepper Jack Wines. I'm Dylan Buckley, and I can hear those chants of yellow and black as I'm joined by a Tiger favourite, Dion Prestia. Thanks for joining us, mate. How are you? Yeah, good. Good, Dylan. Good You're to looking uh, well. Yeah, just nice tan on the buy, so... Um... Yeah, you know how it is. Yeah, I do. I do. It's always good to see you. What have you ordered here, my friend, before we get into it? Oh, well, I thought I'd just bring some meatballs in. <laughs> yeah, okay. Made it myself. Yeah, um, fantastic. Yeah, so... Um, if you want to have a go with that, I've got a white shirt on, so okay. you'll leave it to me. Yeah. I appreciate it. I'll demolish those. <laughs> Meatball, how did the nickname come about? Was it BT? Uh, yeah, well, BT, I, I guess, maybe got it out to the um, public, but I used to play with Michael Ruscitelli, and, um, yeah, my first year I was probably, probably a bit more bigger than what I, yeah. <laughs> what I probably should Meatball-ish. have been. Meatball-ish. Yeah, so he, um, he started calling me the Meatball, and then, yeah, the BT, he uh, got a hold of it and, and just run with it, so it stuck with me for... The last 13 years and mm. <laughs> can't shake it. Unbelievable. <laughs> hey, mate, in all seriousness, I've known you for a long time. It's incredible to just sit down here now. And I've known you as a friend, but just to look at what you've been able to achieve over those 13 years, three flags, 200 games, congratulations to you. That's It's genuinely incredible. I'm not surprised. Take us back, though, to a start. One thing that was unbelievable, um, knowing you for a long time, was the call to cannons and you all sort of like the way you came through. I still think about yeah. that team quite often, like that under-18 mm. Um, season of the bottom ages and top ages that you're with. Name us yeah. a few players that were there and got drafted out of it. Um, yeah, we were, we were pretty lucky with our our zoning, I guess, for for Calder. We, I know the, um, I think the starting midfield was myself, Liber, and uh, Mitch Wallace, who who was at the Bulldogs, as well. And then we had Kim Guffrey um, going through there. Um, Tommy Sheridan, who who played. I think 50 or 60 games in if 80, I think. You can't be too <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, he would be so happy with that. Him, uh, Michael Talia, who, who who was also there, and then we had um, Matt Watson and... Brandon Ellis. Yeah, Brandon Ellis, can't forget him. Um, Luke Mitchell, who, who got drafted to Carlton as well. So, um, yeah, we were, we were real lucky, and I guess it was a bit harder maybe for the country teams to get together and have bonds, but we were we all lived pretty close to each other and, um, yeah, won two premierships, luckily enough. So, yeah, um, yeah it, was, it was a good start to, uh, I guess, my semi, semi-professional semi career. It's incredible, isn't it, when you think then from there getting picked up to go to the Gold Coast Suns, obviously played there for a few years with, you know, varying success at a new club and then changing over to Richmond and now having three flags. It's pretty yeah. cool that that success is sort of being able to follow through your career. Like, you sort of win one flag as a, even in a seniors team and you think that might be it. But for you, it's been, you know, really fortunate to be part of a lot of, yeah. a lot of success. Yeah. Um, I always thought that we'd have success when I was on the Gold Coast now, having so many draft picks and, and you always believe that we'd eventually um, play finals and stuff there. But, yeah, after six years, I th- kind of thought it was time to, to move back home and... and um, yeah, be around family. I, I probably didn't expect this success so so quick. I, I was very confident in in our um, in our list. You know, Alex Rance, Jack Rewalt, um, Trent Cochin, and, and Dusty in the prime of their prime of their careers. They were probably the two that I really wanted to come and, and play with. Um, and yeah, to, to win one in my first year was was really amazing. And we we had an up and down year. And I will we won our first five, lost our next five, and it was just. Um, kind of wondering if I made the right decision or not. But, um, yeah, it's been a been an awesome seven years now that I've that I've been at the club. And, um, yeah, you never know what, what can happen this year. We uh, hit some pretty good form and, and yeah, we'll uh, keep rolling. I think every team is nervous and doesn't want you guys to do it again, which is which is funny. You've come from that team that everyone wanted to win a flag for so long and now everyone sort of hates you again, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. It gives us a bit of confidence, yeah. though. I know a lot of the commentary around it is, like, you don't want to verse the Tigers in, in a finals game and things like that. Or if you see, see us coming up the ladder, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I feel like we have that little bit of an edge, as, as you do, I think... Geelong would probably have that every game this year. That they're um, they're the reigning premiers. So um, yeah, if we if we have that little little bit of a of an edge on our opponent, I think that's what you need because the competition so even this year. Like you need to be on your game to to win any game really. Do you remember the pitch 
to go to the Tigers? I'm always so interested in like that player movement space. Like, what was it like? Where did those conversations come from? And what was happening? Was there any other teams involved in it? Like, yeah, um, it kind of worked itself out a little bit. So. Um, I was a Melbourne supporter and I wanted to go to Melbourne at the start, but they've just picked up Petrarca, Oliver. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I know there's another one that I'm missing in there, but they were like, oh, we just don't, oh, Viney was, was pretty young. So they were pretty much saying we don't need any more mids. And then, um, yeah, it, it kind of came down to Hawthorne and Collingwood. At, ah, Collingwood, I'm at Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> Hawthorne and, Hawthorne and um, Richmond and, and I kind of looked at Hawthorne and they came off the back of so much success that, that I kind of just thought, like, you know, is that the, is that the end of their run or not? And then, um, yeah, as I said, Richmond was, yeah, really a perfect fit. They were able, to, they had an early draft pick to get it to get the trade done, and it all just worked itself out really in the end. So I, I really like, I had the choice, but I kind of like just went straight well, to Richmond. Right. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely yeah. love hearing those stories about what could have been, what's happened, and we see what's happened now with the three, uh, the three flags since, and it's pretty pretty crazy how it's all gone. Um, before we get into this season, talk a bit more about McWalter and what's happening. Give me a little bit of reminiscing of your three flags. Which one's yeah. your favourite? Which stands out for you? Uh, they're all so so different. Um, I think he, I think the seventeen one, the first was probably my my favourite. I think just being underdogs all year, um, and then yeah, really surprising the whole competition in the back half of the year, and even. Um, I know. I feel like the experience of the final series will never be the same. Like the GWS prelim when it, when Kane Lambert kicked the goal within 10 seconds, and the, the noise was just like incredible. And we've, I've never felt anything or um, like that before. So that whole build up, and then again being underdogs against Adelaide in the final um, was was the best. And it's always, I guess, the the first one. You just everything's new and exciting. So um, that that was great. Then. Um, 19 was, we probably had the game one bit earlier and we were able to enjoy, I know, being out in the field and didn't have to stress too much about about the result. And um, yeah, the 2020 hub was just a crazy year that hopefully never happens again. But to, we lived together for four or five months of the year and then it was pretty much a boarding house. And then we won a, won a flag being away from home for, for that long. And as, as well as John to make the grand final, they did the same as us was just, I, don't know, I think was uh, probably the most, the one that just felt really, really good about all the challenges that we faced and being away from family and um, you know playing games within four days of each other and, and continuing to to win was um, yeah it was probably like the the real one that I don't know they're all they're all pretty good they're all so nice. it's hard to split them, yeah isn't so it? yeah. because they're all so different it's not like anything was the same so um, yeah but the first one was was pretty nice. Isn't it crazy, and, and maybe it's not crazy, because I, I said earlier, I'm not surprised at the success and the level you've been able to get to with your footy, but 200 games recently, three flags already to like your name and your career. Still got so much footy to go. Is it pretty cool to see what potentially, you know, I know we don't think about yeah. the rap sheet at the end of the career, but like it, yeah. it, it's looking pretty nice at this stage. Um, and look at the teams yeah. we're talking, like Brisbane, Collingwood, uh, these teams that have won, I oh, can't have won three flags, but those teams that have won three flags in the past and some of those names, like, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, I think I think the Brisbane one probably stands out the most because they were players that you grew up idolising and like, I still remember watching those grand finals yeah. in the early 2000s and uh, thinking, like, how amazing would that be? It's always been a lifelong dream of mine, I think. Um, yeah, I feel like because you, you move on pretty quickly from, mm. from, the, from the premierships, I feel like once you're back in the pre-season, it's like, all right, like, Let's, let's do this again. So I, I feel like the reunions that we have and, and at the end of my career, I'll be able to really enjoy those times and, and share stories that we've that we've had and um, over the years and, and the journey. I know um, we speak about the journey a lot and just enjoying each moment. I think, yeah, once the career's done, hopefully in a couple, mm. still a couple more years, we'll, we'll be able to really um, yeah, get, get into that. Exciting, hopefully another flag too. Uh, McWalter. How's it been at the moment? Mini? Is that his yeah, name? Mini, his yeah. Name? Mini. So Dimmer's just, he's off into the abyss. Mm. He's going travelling. I think he's going to Europe, which we love. Yeah, in the States as well. How have you found um, the change of coach? Is there much changing? Or is if we yeah. pretty quickly you move on, don't you? Like I thought when I mm. sort of got to listed, everyone would miss me. But three weeks later, it's yeah, sort it's of like, like <laughs> it's just no one cares anymore. So it's, is that sort of what it's been like now? Yeah, yeah. it's a bit of a brutal brutal game like that. You kind of, um, oh, Dimmer, Dimmer announced to the team that he was 
wasn't going to be coach. And then the next day we were in training, just business as usual. We got put out, I think it was Port Adelaide leading into that week. So, um, yeah, Mini, Mini's been unbelievable. So we actually played together on the Gold Coast, I think, in 20. 13 or Did he play as a top as a yeah. like a, he finished his career up there? Yeah, wow. yeah. So he played one year. I think it was might have been 2012. So um, yeah, I've known I've known Mini for yeah over over 10 years now, and he's been pretty much the midfield coach the whole time I've been at, at Richmond. So yeah, even though Dimmer was unbelievable, like he the way he motivated us and mm -hmm. and just backed us in no matter what um, was was something that I'll I'll really take from him. But I was so pumped for Mini. As well to, to get that opportunity and he hasn't really changed a lot because he hasn't had to because we we still believe in our system and, and what we do he just um like in a way maybe gave us a little bit of freedom it was like mm. like i really don't don't care if you if you stuff up or um if you want to try something out in the field something different like just go for it like you got a bit of a free reign and um yeah i guess in a way kind of Released the shackles a bit because it was like, well, like let's just let's just do it. If this this year can turn out to be anything, so we've had some really good wins and and things that we wanted to change um, throughout Dimmer's time there. And now I feel like it's all kind of um, evolving. So Dimmer might want to come back. Oh, I think he, I think he might. <laughs> Next few the weeks. boys make the finals. Uh, Tom Lynch had we had a chat with him. We're lucky enough to have a chat, and he spoke about some of Dimmer's pre-game sort of motivation pieces and like he'd always like build a story arc around each game. Yeah. Have you got a favourite and has Mini adapted? Uh, like has he adopted this new thing or is he doing the pre-games a bit differently? Jeez, I don't, I can't really remember. You weren't sure into one. Any of them? <laughs> yeah, okay. I remember, I'm, like, I'm a little bit into music but I remember he always used to play um, like a bit of like the old AC kind of ACDC and, yeah. and um, Pearl Jam and things like that. So um, we had a funny story in the in the hub. We're up in Sydney and we're just having a few drinks. And I remember singing Pearl Jam. I'm still alive. And I got a message from Dimmer saying, "Mate, go to bed and stop wrecking a good song." <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so that was probably one that stands out to me. And I think he joked about it on my 200th couple of weeks ago. He gave me um, an album. The, um, a live song by Pearl Jam and, and just wrote like a note and just said this that's is so something good. that I will remember from you. So that's probably one that stands out stands out the most. But um, yeah, no, Mini hasn't he hasn't had to really do anything like that. So we've kind of a, got a bit of a three one two one, which is the Richmond suburb, mm -hmm. um, bit of a theme for the, our preseason. And um, yeah, Mini's kind of brought a little bit of like a little bit of that back um, with us. And well, we had Trent's three hundredth, which was pretty pretty easy one to get get motivated and up for and um, yeah it's just kind of everything's just about the team like I know it's a bit cliche but um, yeah he pretty much said his first meeting like everything the rest of the year is just how is this going to help the team so um, yeah I think it's I think it's a good message and kind of takes you outside of yourself and um, yeah it's working so do you think he gets a job uh, yeah I, I would I would love him to have the job um, you know kind of Richmond's really good at keeping good people in, in at the club, like players that we want to keep around, we, we keep them in. So, um, yeah, I would love Mini to, to take it. I know it's gonna it's probably going to be his decision if he feels like he's ready ready for it, but I always saw him um, to be a senior coach once he once he was ready for, for that, and maybe this is going to give him that little bit of a push to mm -hmm. get into it early. And I think he's only 36 years old, but I see in the States with the basketball, basketball there's they've got a lot of young coaches and um i think it's a bit of a bit of a trend that they probably relate a bit bit more to the, the players at the moment these younger coaches so i'd love to see mini take it on you do first <laughs> uh your own coaching you getting into some coaching yourself what are you doing at the moment out of out yeah of yeah i've really probably enjoyed over the last few years just the like development of of players and um different ways to to kind of get get through to, to players and, and things like that. So um, yeah, I've done a few, few of the coaching courses that the the um, AFLPA provide for us, and down at our uh, Scotch College doing mm. a bit of work um, down there where I can. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll just pretty much get there as as much as I can. They they're just down the road in uh, Hawthorne there, so I can um, I can pop it, pop down, and they've been great. I, I didn't really know what to expect going into it, um, but yeah, they're they're so. Eager to eager to learn, and I think they got a few. They expect to get picked up in the next few years. So um, yeah, it's been obviously footy doesn't last last forever. So you always got to move on to something else. And um, yeah, we Richmond and I think um, the whole AFL are pretty good at 
giving those opportunities for, for players. For sure. No, it'd be good, mate. I think with your uh, expertise and your knowledge and your career thus far, yeah. it's a pretty good resume to put together to do some coaching. Uh, mate, it's been a pleasure to catch up. I yeah, appreciate you coming you. in to say thank you, my friend. We've got a nice little bottle of Pepper Jack here to share after a maybe end of season review with yeah. Minnie. You might celebrate the new coaching role together, but nice. always good to catch Thanks up, brother. Good. Thanks Cheers. so much. Well, thank you again, and I uh, hope we enjoyed your company. Next week, a one-eyed Collingwood footy mad celebrity food critic, Matt Preston. I'm Dylan Buckley, and this is Friday Knockoffs. We'll see you soon.